Hey everyone, I'm Ryan from thehomesteadconsultant.com. Today I'm going to be doing a tour of a water system that is set up to have passive pressure uh, to the home, to the field, to the livestock, and to the garden. So I wanted to show you how that works. We can do it pretty simply with a single pump and we can collect water not only from the roof, but also from the air conditioning system, which we get about 30 to 40 gallons per day during dry seasons when we're not getting any rain. So it really helps keep things topped off and running. So I wanted to give you a full tour to show you how that system works and give you some ideas on how you might be able to do that at your own homestead. So the first part of the system is actually the downspout diverter. Uh, you can get these uh, of various types. This one is made by Fiskers, a company that makes those uh, uh, clippers and other garden tools. I believe this is actually a discontinued model, but basically what it does is when the water runs down, it runs over a little uh, filter and pushes all the debris down the downspout and then the water falls through that filter and comes down this uh, pipe. Now I've got it I've got this set up near the top of the downspout for a very specific reason. If I were to set this up down further, the water that I get from it wouldn't have uh, as much pressure. The technical term for that is head. Uh, so the amount of pressure that I get from putting this up higher allows me to run that line further or back up into something. Uh, in my case, this actually runs out and along and over into this barrel. Uh, it comes in on the bottom. So you can see that there. Now I can hook up uh, several downspouts that way if I want to, and that's gonna fill this barrel up. Uh, then the next portion of it is I actually have a pump in there with a what's called a float switch, and I can show you that in a minute. But once the water level gets to a certain height, the float switch trips the pump, and the pump pumps water out and then up the hill, which I will also show you shortly. So before I get there, I want to mention that we've also got condensate from the air conditioning system. So we've got two air conditioning systems that run into here. The condensate drains are run straight into this barrel. So in the hot, muggy middle of the summer when we're not getting much rain, we're getting uh, about 30 to 40 gallons of condensate water that drips into this barrel. That is, all that water is, is distilled water that is getting condensed on the uh, fins of the evaporator coil uh, in the air, air conditioning system. And so there's really not much as far as contaminants and issues with that water. It should basically just be distilled water that's running through a pipe into here. So those are the two forms of water we're getting. We're getting uh, catchment from the roof as well as, uh, as well as water from the HVAC. Now this is the inside of the barrel. It looks more, a lot dirtier on the video than it does in real life, but uh, that's okay because we're using it for plants and animals. It's not a huge deal. Uh, so what we're actually doing is when the water level gets high enough, this is called a float switch and that turns on our pump. In this case, I'm using a sub submersible pump and that's going to have a one-way or check valve on it that is in a place that's not visible so I can't show you right now. Um, and what that's going to do is pump water out, out this way, and then up to a high point on the property, which we'll go out and look at in a minute. So that line runs underground through here and up to those tanks. And right at the fence line, you can see, well, it's tough to see because they're a little bit underground, but there's a couple of... Um, buried tees. So these are actually underground, but I put a cap over them. You can use uh, like a sprinkler system uh, container. Rainbird makes them so that these can be buried uh, six, six to probably 18 inches underground. And then I've got tees in there. I've got another one nearby that has valves so I can actually shut off different areas to the farm. So those tees are in here. Um, one goes up to the tanks there, one goes to the spigot right there in the uh, field area. Another one that I won't be able to show you from here is over in the garden. Uh, we have one down in the root cellar as well. And those are actually all fed 
off of the same line that runs up there because the line that I'm using to push water up to those tanks at the top of the hill is actually the same line that I'm using to run these spigots in the field and elsewhere uh, because it actually has uh, back pressure on it. Because I have what's called a check valve or one-way valve at the pump, all the water that's up there is actually has back pressure back to you know my spigots, uh, back to the system itself, out to the garden, all through uh, the same pipe. So that's why I'm able to put T's in the pipe that is being used to fill the tanks. I can put T's on it and actually have uh, back pressure back towards behind me and get water to the entire farm from this one system up at the top of the hill. Now this might be difficult to see from where I'm standing, but I'm quite a bit higher up in elevation to the rest of the farm. This is by far the highest location on the farm. So uh, we had one flat spot at the very top of the peak here where I'm storing these IBC totes. Um, I'm hoping to put an additional IBC tote next to this, but I could actually string them along if I wanted to, depending on the amount of water storage I want. And you can see the line that comes out of the ground here, then goes to a T. And that T, one side fills this tank, one side fills this tank. Of course, they're IBC tanks, so they have the shutoff valve. So if I wanted to shut one of the tanks off, I can do that. And then I've got a little spigot on that line here that works on the same principle as ones downhill from here where uh, because it's tied to the line that's feeding these tanks, there's also back pressure to this location as well. So I could hook up a hose here and water the orchard, which is looking a little sad because we've had a lot of leaf loss, it's the fall. Um, but that's the basics. So these two IBC totes, as long as they're roughly level with each other, they will fill up at the same time. Basically, I've got 600 gallons of stored water at the top of uh, the top of the elevation for the farm with a line running back that I can tie on to pretty much anywhere I want to that then gives me pressure, though it's not high pressure, it gives me pressure back to my current system. So as I walk down to the garden to tell you a bit more about uh, how this system works and show you an actual working uh, spigot so that you can uh, see and visualize some of it. I wanted to mention one of the mistakes that I made uh, in putting this in. So when I put it in, I had gotten uh, basically free polyline. That's that uh, polyurethane or polypropylene uh, line. And I'd gotten half inch line for free. And I had a half of a day of a trencher rental uh, that I had done at another project close by. So I was able to use that free here on site as well. Um, so I was able to put the line underground uh, for free with the exception of my labor. And uh, it's worked. But my issue with that is you really should be running at least inch and a quarter for those kinds of lengths. So we've got uh, probably a thousand feet worth of uh polyline underground and it's all half inch which reduces the flow because you actually have uh, basically friction resistance of the water on the inside of the pipe as it flows through so increasing the size of the pipe each small increment actually makes a dramatic difference on the flow through so we used half inch pipe and uh, what I would actually recommend is one inch to one and a half inch, uh, with one and a quarter inch usually being the easy to work, easiest to work with and the cheapest uh, overall for the flow rate that you can get of poly pipe. And that's the black, uh, black variable pipe that you can get for, especially for agricultural purposes. Um, that's probably going to be your best bet. And I'll show you why in a second here. All right, I'm in the garden here, and uh, it's actually looking a little bit sad because it's very end of season, so all the tomatoes have pretty much died off and gotten blight. We had some cold nights, so we got a bunch of uh, tomatoes that fell on the ground, and there's some chickens in here helping us clean it up. 
But what I want to show you in here is actually this, um, this spigot. And I was talking about how uh, because we used this half inch line, we did have some reduction in flow. So I'm going to show that to you now. So we get about 15 PSI from the top of the hill. So it's not like an unusable amount of water. It would be great for, uh, say, a like a drip hose or uh, slower, lower pressure irrigation systems. It'd be perfect for. But you're not going to hook it up to a hose and be able to spray uh, significant different uh, distances. Um, so you're not going to hook it up to like standard sprinklers. So soaker hoses and things it works great for. It works great for, uh, say, filling up the chicken's water and things like that. But uh, you're not going to get a lot of pressure from it. Um, so that is one thing to consider and you're not going to get a huge amount of flow or at least we're not because we use this half inch line Like I said, I'd like to see uh, one inch to one and a half inch as the ideal overall Thanks so much for watching. I hope you found this information really helpful and I hope it helps you set up your own resilient water system if you want to find out more about what I do and how I can help you, visit thehomesteadconsultant.com for uh, additional information and uh, pricing as well as what kinds of things I do. I think it explains it pretty simply and I'd love to help you out if I can.